Fellow soldiers, I'm Sergeant Major Akram Shaheed at the Army Medical Logistics Command. In this video, you will learn about the Medical Chemical Defense Material, or MCDM program, which is centrally managed by AMLC. This video will include an overview of the MCDM program, which is designed to protect soldiers and military working dogs. We will walk you through the Army's process for validating and improving requirements, as well as budgeting for the program. Then you will learn more about the AMLC's role in the central management of this material. Then we'll visit an MTF to take a look at where the material is stored and issued to deploying units. Finally, we'll go over the unit level responsibilities, including how to request it, track it, transport, and store it. Ultimately, divest or dispose of this material. With that, I'll hand it off to the Office of the Surgeon General to talk about the program and their role in MCDM. MCDM program stands for the Medical CBRN Defense Material, and it's a special centrally managed program that allows access to unique CBRN medical countermeasures that are required for deployed forces. So the predominant uh, medical countermeasure in this kit are for chemical exposures. And so as a soldier, you're often used to working with your mop gear. And so what this is, is this material augments your mop gear and it provides a way to treat our soldiers if they have an exposure uh, caused by a breakthrough of their, of their individual protective equipment. As a, as a unit, it would be rare for you to pull this material out and use it on a regular basis. And in order to save costs and ensure we're best stewards of the dollars, we have a centrally managed program that allows us to manage this unique set of, of pharmaceuticals and other uh, treatment options uh, so that the costs associated for the whole program are less for the entire Army, but they're also available to soldiers at time of deployment requirements. So the, the process to request material this is actually pretty simple. The unit, once they realize they have a, a, a deployable mission requirement, notifies their installation medical support activity and notifies them of a desire to pick up a set of material that's predefined. The installation medical support activity, the IMSA, then sends that request to the healthcare operations team at the Office of the Surgeon General, where we can adjudicate the request and make sure that it's in direct support of deployment requirements and that it has a CBRN threat in that area of responsibility. So once that happens, we approve the request and then the installation medical support activity issues the material to the unit prior to deployment. I think the, the hardest part for soldiers is just unfamiliarity with the equipment as it's listed on their, on their MTO documents. So usually the first time that they see this as pre-deployment as they look to fill all requirements on their MTO. And most of them haven't realized that this material has been there listed on their, on their MTO the whole time and they just haven't had a reason to pull it up and, and look at what's there. So at time of deployment, when they, when they submit the request, they often haven't reviewed their MTO documents to ensure that they understand exact quantities and how they fit inside the various medical equipment sets or individual issue items. So the, the biggest issue with not understanding your quantities or capabilities on your MTO is at time of fill, you may not request the right material or in the right quantities. Um, and the part of the adjudication process by the operations staff is to ensure that the commanders are aware of the material they're supposed to have. Uh, ultimately, the MCDM program is a commander's responsibility during deployment, and so our goal is to advise them on what they're allowed to have and ensure they have the opportunity to take all the material they, they should for the deployment. I think the, the most important thing is to realize that there's a, there's a substantial number of people that are available to help you. So as, as units and, and individuals look at how do they ensure their, their unit meets their medical countermeasures requirements, don't be afraid to send emails to ask questions, right? Send up that initial request get the information chain started, uh, and then we'll make sure the material is available to you at time of deployment. OTSG owns and releases MCDM material. Usama acts as the manager with the responsibility of managing all facets of that inventory. There are three projects in the MCDM program. The first one, DH1, is the initial issue MCDM for deployable force packages. The second is DH5, potency and dated MCDM for the MES chemical agent patient treatment and decontamination in the entire MES chemical patient protective wrap. The third is Y3R1, initial issue MCDM for defense seaburn response force, which is initial issue of potency and dated seaburn items for the medical equipment set chemical agent patient treatment and decontamination, an entire MES chemical patient protective wrap. Unit leaders should have a clear understanding that MCDM material is available through the supporting SSA, MTF, 
IMSA, or TLO once the request is approved by OTSG. Once material is issued to the unit, material is now owned by that unit and no longer a part of the inventory. Communication is paramount with their higher headquarters and the supporting organization. The earlier and clearer the communication about unit needs for MCDM, the more likely it is that the process will go smoothly and that the needed material will be at hand for Army personnel when needed. I'm Sergeant First Class Aridelis Gray. I'm the program manager for the Shelf Life Extension Program. SLEP is just an extension program that works with other materials. In this case, will be MCDM. FDA look at the, uh, the materials that we have on hand. They look at the lot numbers, and they look at the quantities that we have on hand. FDA looks at it, okay, this is worth testing because we have enough on hand. Then the FDA goes ahead and tests that lot number. They test the item, and they make sure that it's still accurate, that this item could still do what it's supposed to do, right? It's effective for the soldiers downrange. And normally, the extension could be two to th three years, depending on the item itself. So it's very important that units ensure that they put their items, everything that they receive from NCDM needs to be in their system, whether this is demos, decam, or tools, because this is what gets reflected um, in JMR for accurate information. And then once we receive this accurate information, when this information is in JMR, then this is how to be a, um, eligible for SLEP testing and for SLEP label. So SLEP is important because it gives you a sense of security, right? Now you know, okay, this item does work, right? So in the event of a seaburn attack, you're able to put this auto injector and be like, you know what, I'm going to be safe because this has been tested. What we're here for is to provide the support on Class A medical supply internally, the medical center, external unit, and as well TONE community. We square away all the documentation, including the sanction command, the 1687, the memorandum, all the, the working copy that we require from the unit. We notify and we pass the information to OTSG as soon as possible for the release of the material. In the meantime, while all this documentation is moving around and phone calls are made, we already start setting up the supply that we're going to be issuing out. So we are ahead of the game. We cannot rely to wait until we get the approval. We will pack the, the item for the unit that deploying, and based on the approval by OTSG, we move forward and continue having the, the unit to come over and obtain and sign for the, for the item. I want all the soldiers, uh, not just the soldiers, but airmen, Navy, everybody in the DOD, to take this program serious. Uh, I want them to pull out regulation. I want them to train. Training is the key, knowing. Because when you go to an unknown scenario and you have not done your homework, uh, you're gonna fail. I don't wish that we're gonna be in that situation, but we have to be prepared. That's why uh, we have this program. It's for the safeguard of the nation, safeguard of the soul. I mean, just think about a soul in the foxhole uh, in mob gear, ready to, to defend the nation, and we have to make sure that if we're under chemical, biological, we can survive, we, we can operate and survive. Hi, I'm Patrick Baker. I'm the Chief of Medical Logistics for the 82nd Airborne Division. Hi, I'm Captain Jesse Pisano. I am the Detachment Commander for 42nd and 550th MP Detachments. Okay, when we need MCDM, we go to the hospital, we bring the BMSO with us. The BMSO already has signature cards on file with the DLA readiness folks at the hospital. Our handlers are going to go on a deployment. Um, they go to the MTF to draw their MCDM. We do have soldiers that are on the IRF uh, mission. Um, they, If they have their orders ahead of time, they can actually pick up that initial issue earlier. We show up there with some trucks and they sign for it. It's already prepackaged, ready to go because we will have already provided them all the MES cases and triwalls they need. So once our unit is issued MCDM, it's our job to maintain that within our inventory um, until after the deployment, and then they go through the proper commander's procedures to dispose of those items. So if it's not used in theater, we generally turn it in through the Class 8 system. So we will send it in with all of our unused Class 8. We do have the ability to bring it back with us and turn it in through the IMSA, but that's extra cargo space so we don't do it unless we're told we have to. There is also the option of handing it over to the next unit. 
Um, if we're being replaced, that's generally what we'll do because there are shortages of the auto injectors, so that way they get passed on instead of just turned in and destroyed. The MCDM is a great program to have. It helps with our readiness, and it's great for us to be able to pull from that prior to deployment. If it's needed, it is highly necessary. There's no other way to treat and to protect these soldiers without it. Hello, I'm Master Sergeant Andrew Colbert, Senior Enlisted Leader for United States Army Medical Materiel Center Europe. When a unit is in theater and ready to redeploy back to their home station, they should request disposition instructions for the return, transfer, or turn-in of medical materiel. Upon receipt of disposition instructions, units should contact their TLAM to coordinate Class 8 turn-in. The TLAM will assist in conducting a joint inventory and that 100% of the documentation is correct. The first step is to schedule the turn-in with ample time to conduct the physical inventory and ensure there are no errors within documentation. A DA-3161 will be initiated and your TLAM can assist. It is important that on the DA-3161, items are listed by NSN nomenclature by expiration date and grouped by lot number. A unit commander will endorse the DA-3161, ensuring material is released by the appropriate authorities. Units must turn in all MES in accordance with the theater commander's guidance. Remember, your TLAM is here to help. Thank you for watching our training video on the MCDM program. If you need more information from AMLC, please reach out to us. Medical readiness, MedLog ready.